Good afternoon guys, it is a Saturday, it is adventure day, vlog day for us. Today we find ourselves in the city of London. We decided to get up early, get out. Didn't really go to plan because we could have got a train earlier um, because you have a peak. And an off peak. And an off peak and it doesn't count on a Saturday. We yeah. thought we did for some stupid reason. Mm -hmm. So we caught a later train which was heaving, but it only took 37 minutes from Bletchley. We got into London Euston made our way down through the northern line to the embankment got on a circle line train and no it was a circle circle to monument circle to monument yes, and um we've got off there walked around the monument after having a coffee that was important <laughs> always important to have a caffeinated <laughs> beverage and um then we've made our way past the monument to some ruins in london so got a few tales to tell on the way so hope you can join us see you in a bit guys this is your famous London monument the gold orb at the top when it is stretched out and reaches a point which is in Pudding Lane that is the starting point of the Great Fire of London in 1666 believed to have started in the Baker's house some cakes got burnt and then it all stopped because London then was all predominantly wood. You don't have brick or marble like you do nowadays. It is just, I don't know, a bygone era. And it was like tinder dry and the whole place went up. Virtually two thirds, three quarters of London was totally destroyed by it. And this here is a monument that stands to this day. You can go up it, it's over 300 steps. And there's a spiral staircase going all the way to the top. We will not be doing it today because my legs cannot take it. But at some point, I will show you guys what it is like up there. It's supposed to be a spectacular view. Rachel was saying that's not bad. I suppose this day and age it isn't. But the only thing is, Access via stairs only, and that is a heck of a way up. Rach was just saying that this was originally classed as a house, but it's more of a facade nowadays. If I show you to the side how actually thin it is, so I walk across here, you see your standard walls. It does look like something out of a film set, to be honest with you, but you walk to the side, and it's only then you get the, the width. There is nothing to that whatsoever. I know post-war time they did use a lot of these with train stations they put them on they make a place look a bit more welcoming I guess there's facades at a lot of old tube stations and of course with London you get a shed load of pubs with some really rather unusual names that is the Warris and Carpenter never been in there <laughs> As you can see from our general location, if you look just to the side there, that is the top of the shard. So it just gives you a general reference of where we are. To our right, we will have the monument. We're in the area also of the Tower of London. We're going to make our way heading towards Whitechapel eventually, uh, Aldgate, Leaden Hall Market, and a few other places on, on route. I guess you do not expect to see proper ruins in London, central London, left. This was standing at the time of the Great Fire of London. The town that was rebuilt by Sir Christopher Wren. Um, I believe it had periods with the plague, etc. But it met its demise in 1941 when the German Luftwaffe come over with the Blitz. And this place pretty much copped it. All that is left is the shell, the ruins, and they've got it set up now as a garden area that you can just pretty much walk through. It's supposed to be perfect for your Instagrammers. So we're just gonna go and have a look around. Just left the nature. I don't know why I'm surprised, but this place is actually heavy populated this moment in time with tourists going around getting photo shots so it's obviously well known it's 
said it's pretty much just the outer shell nothing remains from inside that would have been scorched burnt to pieces later on cleared with rubble etc but it's just left now as a pleasant garden where people can reflect just have their lunch break in peace and quiet and it's just a good staging post to go The reason for generally being in this area, because I want to lead this to a story which I know to be true, that my grandfather told me four decades ago. So, my grandfather, John Joseph Winnup, who was born in Mermaid Court, which is the other side of the Thames, it's in a place called Bermondsey, just across from Borough Market um, on the A3, you've got Guy's Hospital just to the side of that. Now, he lived in that area, would come around this area himself doing his work before and before when he was a younger playing about. And he heard a story himself and he passed it on to my father and he also told me this about four decades ago. And that story is basically always look up and around you what things are because it goes like this back in the day when they were building the likes of your not so much modern high rises but buildings of a, a medium height sort of around where we are now basically you would have people sitting on raised platforms doing a cement one brickwork etc and then they would have a lunch break now on a certain day two guys they weren't friends they were just colleagues they're having their lunch break one put his lunch down by the side of him and they're having a chat he turned around looked around went back to grab his cheese and a bit of bread to have his lunch and it was gone and he turned around and said to his work colleague where's my lunch gone and he turned around and said the mouse took it from there on he's turning around saying basically jovial where's me lunch stop messing me about got into a heated argument now the speculation where the story can vary from there which Rachel picked up on earlier and which I believe that my grandfather's version is the true version is they ended up in a scuffle one guy pushed the other the guy he believed to have eaten the sandwich off the ledge he fell to his death and as he fell to his death he looked around and then he looked to the side and there was two mice running away with a piece of his cheese so from that moment on he was arrested and he was hung for his crime so that's what happened back in that day um other people have turned around and said they had a scuffle and they both fell to their death but rachel quite cleverly turned around and said if that was to happen how did the story ever materialize if no one survived it so i believe my grandfather's version of that happening is more likely to be a true account of things and there is this is the strange thing about it. There is a sculpture in London on Philpot Lane that depicts the actual mouse and the cheese. So we're going to go and have a look at that now. That is your mobile phone with your world famous Sky Garden up there, which is a restaurant and an overlook. So right, that's Philpot Lane. And right there, if I focus in, is the sculpture itself tiniest of things as a van comes past we're standing in the middle of the road unfortunately there you go two mice with a piece of cheese people probably just generally walk past it every day without taking a blind bit of notice of it and the incident would have happened some way up there. This is your famous Leadenall Market or Leadenall Market as I would say. 
famed for a filming location. This is where they actually got the inspiration for Diagon Alley. And two Harry Potter films actually had scenes shot here. Now a famous spot I'm looking at over there, I'll talk to you about the story of a famous goose called Tom. Now, I can't remember the year exact, I think it might have been 1797, between then and 1835, because he lived for 38 years after it actually happened. And that is, I think over two days, they slaughtered somewhere in the region of, I think it was 24,000 geese. Now this sort of time it would have been, maybe it was around Christmas time even, so people would have had geese, or maybe that was just usual fare that you would get. But somehow Tom survived and he became a local favourite around here, like a modern day celebrity. People loved him and he lived for 38 years and he is laid to rest underneath the Lamb Tavern, which is standing right in front of us. Yep, dragons everywhere. Very, very picturesque. Shame he's got a load of scaffolding up at the moment. And that's what the original pub would have been called, Old Tom's Bar, in recollection of that famous bird. I don't think I fancy going up in there. It's very weird and out of place in this area. It looks very much like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory or something like that. Right. Is anyone getting a Harry Potter vibe yet? But this is pretty much where they filmed it. This is where they filmed Diagon Alley. Okay guys, I know a few of you out there love your likes of Universal, Disney, etc. And followed us on our adventures to Florida, where we went to Universal Studios. Now obviously some people are very much into the Harry Potter world, Hagrid's, etc, etc. Behind us there is actually a specific film location which I will show you guys. I'll show you it, see if you can guess what it is before I tell you. Let's go and have a look. You are pretty much going to have to use your imagination. Imagine this corner door, but the whole of it is blacked out. Now Hagrid and Harry Potter would have gone in there, and that is the actual en entrance that they used as the film location. That would have been the Leaky Cauldron, right there. And this is... Bullheads Passage, Leading Hall Market, London. Okay, so we have just had a great little find here. This is Black Sheep Coffee. Yeah. Opposite the Lloyd's building. And I've got to say, it's probably the best coffee we've both had in a yeah. long, long time. Yeah, they would start for really it nice It wasn't in there. bitter at all. It had a lovely, pleasant taste. Went down lovely. Um, we used it basically specifically because <laughs> we was looking for a toilet, to be honest with you. And we thought, okay, if you've got a coffee, we'll have one. We ended up having one each and we really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. So, Black Sheep Coffee, I'm not sure is it Leading Hall Street? Something like Opposite that. Opposite yeah. the Lloyd's building, which yeah. is that unusual thing over there. 
Okay, London has strange history around every corner. We are currently standing at a point which indicates in significance the start of East London. This is the Aldgate pump. Now this pump has two stories to its name. The first being this brass, bronze, etc. wolf's head, because this denotes or believed to denote the actual spot where the last grey wolf was shot and killed in London many many hundreds of years ago and then also it is the spot of something a bit more sinister which has I don't know it depends on the way you look at stories some two people might find it humorous it is quite shocking um, basically the story goes that the people in the area love the crisp sharp taste of the water it was very agreeable to them um, it gave them a nice pleasant feeling but the problem was is where it came from the water itself flowed through many streams brooks etc but it also this isn't a Peckham spring sort of tale by the way um, it also flowed through many cemeteries and what people were actually drinking was the water that was going over and diluting the beloved, those at rest and their remains, the water would flow through them into this pump area and people would be basically dining out on the juice of those at rest. Now the problem that came with that is that a good six, maybe 700 people went on to die from an epidemic which was then known as the all gay pump epidemic now i don't know whether that was cholera but yeah that's the significant history of this spot here and this is where east london starts These very cobbled streets marked probably the most sinister time in London's history with a certain foe who was never caught. He of course was Jack the Ripper, of which we don't know who he was. I have my own specific feelings of who I believe it is. Um, it's in my belief the murders stopped when one of the suspects, I'm not going to name the suspect, so people can actually make their own view on it. He left here and fled to America and then murders of the same sort of nature started happening there. And then he died and the murder stopped all together. So make of that what you will. This is Gunnersfort Lane. Um, we're in the area of where Mitre Lane, all that sort of area. And this is where the victims of Jack the Ripper would have been slain. Obviously, over the years, these alleyways would have been renamed, buildings would have changed, the experts would basically use distinctive spots from photographs like this school they would see in photographs, which still stands now, but everything around it is totally different. And that is just a little taster of what will be coming up in future vlogs okay guys we're going to call it a day for today it's been good it's been tiring i believe you had a good time at your age. i have i've had a really good time we had a good coffee that's for sure um yeah this bit is a bit of a taste there's something i'd like to do is a walk that we done around the time just before the pandemic set in which i went on a tour with my sister we walked around i wrote a lot of things down of places to visit so we visited here and some of the crime scenes of Jack the Ripper. The, we then went on to the Blind Beggar, which is the pub notorious with the Cray Twins. So that will be coming up. Don't know when, but we'll certainly film, vlog that, and put our own spill, our own story to it. I've got a little bit of history from my side of the family, my father with his 
inhabitants with the Richardson brothers, which are the South London guys. So, yeah, I'll bring that story to life itself. Thank you guys for watching. It has been, it was tough today. It took me a while to get in the swing of things. Once I get going, I'm fine. But when you first start, I'm a bit sort of, oh, I don't know, am I doing this right and whatever. And it sort of takes over. But once I get in the swing of things and I get flowing, it comes out and it's fine. Fine for you guys, I believe. Anyway, you would tell me otherwise for sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will see you in the movies. Bye for now.